Hello, everyone, and welcome to CW and Cisco webinar on how to mobilize your workforce without skipping a beat. My name is Phil Clowater, and I'm an account executive on the enterprise sales team at CW Canada. As a reminder, it is Wednesday, otherwise known as Season 4, Episode 3 of Working From Home. Uh, we'll just jump over to our next slide here. Uh, so CW Canada has nine offices across the country. Uh, basically, where there is an NHL team, we have an office. Currently, we have 900 plus coworkers across the country. And from here, we'll pop over to the introduction slide. So first, we have Kevin from Cisco, a collaboration BDM. Next, we have Tolu from CW Canada, and he is a field solution architect in collaboration. Finally, we have myself, an account executive on the enterprise sales team. If you don't know your CW account manager, please email marketingteam at cbw.ca for assistance. Uh, please enter any questions in the Q&A chat box in WebEx window, and we will be answering these at the end of the presentation. If you do not see the Q&A chat box, please click on the three dots at the bottom of the presentation, and you will see the option to enable Q&A. Here, I'll pass it over to Kevin to introduce us to the WebEx experience. Indeed. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for taking some time out of what I'm sure is a very busy day uh, to join this call. Um, Going to spend a little bit of time, you know, talking about working from home and some of the other uh, bits and pieces that Cisco can add to your work from home environment. But indeed, spending the bulk of the day talking about our online meeting platform, uh, WebEx. And thanks for that intro, Phil. Uh, indeed, my name is Kevin Yonke. I help look after collaboration and support our partners here in Canada. I joined uh, Cisco a number of years ago through the Tandberg video conferencing uh, acquisition, not to date myself. Um, and uh, so, being in this conferencing world or this meetings world is really my bread and butter and, and where I come from. Um, so like I said, I want to spend a little bit of time here talking about uh, kind of our core meetings platform or our core meeting solution, which is, of course, uh, WebEx. And, you know, I've got a couple screenshots here on this slide, um, and I'll be kind of the first to admit that WebEx was always a very feature rich uh, tool for people to use to get together and meet with one another. But sometimes joining the meeting looked like we had hopped in the DeLorean and we had landed in 1994 uh, when we actually joined that meeting. So uh, Cisco has done a lot of work over the past little while, and I'm sure some of you are familiar with this new WebEx meeting experience that we have. Um, and here's an example of it that we have here on this screenshot. So. We've really tried to, you know, sex up our meeting experience, if you will. Um, we've really removed a lot of unnecessary buttons and icons and print that doesn't need to be there. Uh, video has always been something that's been ingrained. It's in fact a video first experience. And, you know, we're trying to make it as easy as possible for people to navigate around the meeting once they jump on with some very familiar buttons and icons that you see along the bottom there. But of course, it's worth noting that WebEx is more than just meetings. Um, as some of you may or may not be aware, a little while ago, I like to say we, we took some steroids and injected them into the WebEx cloud. And now what we have is a platform uh, in the cloud for collaboration. And if you're familiar with our call manager platform, our on-prem platform, where we can do voice, video, uh, meetings, messaging, the whole array of collaboration solutions from on-prem, we can now deliver that all from the cloud as well, right? So everything that you see here, whether that be a dedicated desktop video endpoint, uh, the meeting solution, uh, phone or voice from the cloud, as well as a messaging platform is all available uh, from the WebEx platform that we have in the cloud. So I wanted to kind of make you all aware that we've done a lot of work with regards to our user interface and we're trying to make it as easy to use as possible and that we've expanded our portfolio beyond just meetings to all these other areas of collaboration that we can address inside of your environment and all of this you know delivered from the cloud in an as a service model um, here's my brag slide uh, for WebEx, right? If you guys maybe aren't aware, uh, we are a bit of a monster in this industry. We have a ton of users using our meeting platform. Um, but again, 
when you look beyond just meetings, you know, we are uh, very well versed in all aspects of collaboration. Right, so when we look at what we did with our cloud calling portfolio, for example, um, what we've done, it was a bit of a can't beat them buy them solution where we acquired Broadsoft, who is the largest cloud calling uh, provider on the planet. I think the top three are Broadsoft, RingCentral, and Vonage, and Vonage is built on Broadsoft. Um, when you look at what we're doing, say, in the video conferencing world, I'm pretty bullish about the fact that uh, no one's doing what we're doing in the video endpoint space. Um, and we've actually just released a new desktop endpoint that we saw in that previous slide that I think leapfrogs what we already had in, in this space. Um, but of course, we're all aware of the fact that the world kind of got turned upside down a couple weeks ago. So, you know, here's a great slide about what WebEx is all about. But here's maybe something that's a little bit more relevant, uh, an even bigger brag slide as to this is what we did on our WebEx platform while the world was getting turned upside down in the month of March. So there's a lot of press out there right now around a lot of uh, meeting providers or web conferencing providers. Um, you know, we've been pretty busy as well, right? 14 billion meeting minutes in one month. Um, and that's, you know, on top of this explosion of usage that we've had. So WebEx has been around for a while. We've built this to be uh, an organization's backbone when it comes to how they reach out and collaborate with people outside of the organization. And we were ready um, for the world getting turned upside down. I'm pretty proud to say that we've done a fantastic job of maintaining our quality of service for our customers um, while still addressing this huge influx of new users that we're seeing uh, where collaboration, you know, for everybody here on the call, I don't think collaboration wasn't anywhere on your priority list, but we had fish to fry and there were different day-to-day uh, -day problems or month-to-month -month or year-to-year -year problems that we had to address, but certainly overnight, something like collaboration has become very top of mind for everybody. And part of the reason that you know I can have those brag slides as part of my presentation is the way that we look at meetings or WebEx or collaboration, right? We look at it through a couple different angles. We don't just look at the tree, we look at the forest, right? So when I talked about our common uh, user interface, that common user interface that we have is applicable across every single device that you would use inside of a Cisco environment. So the way I would have joined a meeting inside of our Cisco office is the exact same way as I join a meeting at home is the exact same way I join a meeting on a mobile device like this. Uh, some of you are probably aware Cisco is also a security company. So we weave security into these solutions from the ground up. They are not necessarily add-ons. Um, some of you on the call might be users of something like Meraki, for example, and we've learned a lot of lessons through that visibility and control that comes through that uh, Meraki dashboard. So we give that same type of visibility and control through our WebEx hub, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that and demonstrate that for you later. And we're including or again embedding some forward thinking technologies like AI, for example, into our meetings. So your meetings are going to start to get smarter, right? If you if you have a repeat meeting with uh, and it's time to have that fifth meeting, but for some reason you've maybe left a person off of that meeting invitation, the meeting could be smart enough to suggest that maybe we add that person back on. And of course, you as the user have that choice as to whether or not that would be something you would want to do. So we're thinking beyond just what happens when we're actually real time in the call. But how is this investment going to ripple across your organization and make sense uh, in other areas? Right. And so to address that again, very top of mind for us, you know, we want to make sure that our meeting experience is easy. Uh, and it's very easy for end users, but we also want to make sure that it's very easy to manage, right? So whether it be meetings or our entire WebEx portfolio, everything is man managed and administrated through a single pane of glass. Um, and again, that's something we're going to stop talking about right now and show you guys a little bit later. Um, and everything that we do, again, is built to either grow or shrink depending on what is happening inside of your organization. Um, and make sure that as you're adding or modifying or merging or whatever it might be that it's 
can be done from an administrative perspective and it's very safe and secure as well as scalable. Right, so again, um, it's one modern platform that we have for our meetings experience, for our calling experience, for our web conferencing or video conferencing uh, experience. And uh, customers have the ability to deploy the entire platform or pick and choose what pieces they might need to round out their collaboration portfolio. Right, so if maybe whatever you're doing for messaging is rock solid and, and everyone in your organization is happy with that, um, but you are to maybe move your calling from on-prem to the cloud or improve your meeting experience and allow you to meet with more people outside of your firewall, we can actually integrate that into some of the tools that you're using today. Um, so it's not necessarily a you've chosen the wrong thing or a rip and replace conversation. It's simply a, you know, where does whatever you have fall down, stop, and how can we augment that? And again, if we just need to augment meetings, no problem. If we just need to augment calling, no problem. We can solve your immediate problems today and then work with you on what that roadmap looks like down the road, right? So, you know, digging in a little bit deeper here into the actual meeting experience, I hope uh, most, if not everybody on the call today found it fairly easy to join the call here. Um, Right, you, you've probably noticed that you can join through the WebEx app, but we do have the ability to join right from a browser. Um, so making it as frictionless as possible for people that may have never joined a WebEx meeting to join before. And again, um, video is, you know, table stakes for our organization, unless you want to have that camera turned off, like I might have done if I had my six-year-old uh, playing behind me right now. Um, and again, the ability to say share content, chat, um, record your meeting are all uh, available through these simple buttons that we have that pop up on the screen when you mouse over. <clears throat> and uh, inside of our meetings platform, you know, not everybody is looking for just a simple meeting. For example, right now we're using one of our sister products called WebEx Event Center that has more. Um, uh, engagement tools built into it and at the same time is much built much more around a one-to-many type of conversation as opposed to an interactive conversation. Uh, we also have tools for remote education like our training center solution where you can create breakout rooms and you know bring everybody together in one call have them move into these separate breakout spaces bring them all back together again to share what they just talked about or what they learned and those type of features. So <clears throat> These are all available to our customers, but much like our WebEx suite of products, customers don't have to deploy all this. We can deploy all this a la carte, uh, depending on what you need inside the organization. So maybe you have, you know, five sales leads, Tom, Dick, Harry, Jane, and Sue across Canada that need to meet with more customers or engage with their teams a little bit more. Um, but, you also recognize that there's going to be some culture changes and your HR team are looking for ways to kind of train and, and measure this training around some of these new practices or policies for the organization. So we can give Tom, Dick, Harry, Jane, Sue those five meeting center licenses to have those sales meetings and build those relationships that way. But we can also deploy a license for the HR team that they can share and use for these uh, training uh, you know, events that they have coming up. Okay, so a couple different flavors of the WebEx solution, depending on what you're looking to do. We're not trying to solve every problem with one hammer and one nail. We're gonna pick the right tool for the job. And we're gonna dig in to the integrations a little bit deeper, but I wanna make you guys all aware that it's really easy to schedule your WebEx meetings inside of whatever you use for calendaring or meeting with people today. Right, so if you're a Microsoft Outlook user, for example, you can get a button for Microsoft Outlook, no problem to download that. Um, and you click that button once and it populates all that meeting information inside of your organization. Or even better, we can do things like turn on uh, Active Directory connectors and uh, what we call a calendar connector. So when I wanna meet with someone over WebEx in that location bar, all I even have to do is type at WebEx 
those six letters and all of that WebEx information will be populated into my meeting invite automatically for me. WebEx will talk to Outlook, we'll let the robots do the work and we're gonna focus on what we should be focusing on is meeting with someone and solving a problem or helping them out or whatever it might be. And when it comes time to do that, we really don't want you guys to be thinking about things like, are you in front of my firewall, behind my firewall, an Android device, iOS device, Mac, PC? Uh, are you in Timbuktu or are you in Toronto? It's hard enough finding that 30 minutes in our calendar when we can actually get together and meet. Uh, we shouldn't have to worry about all those other considerations. We should be able to deploy or invite someone to a meeting and they can join with whatever they have, uh, dial in with whatever phone they have. And like I talked about, even if they have never joined a WebEx meeting before, no problem, they can just join via browser. Um, another tool that we have deployed here in the WebEx cloud is what we call WebEx Teams. Um, this is our social enterprise media platform. Uh, yeah, it's called Teams. Uh, it's very similar to another product out there called Microsoft Teams. I think a lot of these organizations are moving to this Teams type of uh, naming for this type of way of working. Um, so, you know, I should call out there that Microsoft have their Teams platform. We have our WebEx platform. Um, they have Microsoft messaging inside of uh, their world. We have messaging as well. We just call it uh, WebEx Teams. So a little bit confusing, thanks to our marketing friends uh, on the West Coast in uh, Washington and Silicon Valley. Um, but I wanted to call out that sometimes there is some confusion um, that Microsoft Teams and WebEx Teams are the same thing. They're both collaboration platforms, WebEx and Microsoft Teams. And then underneath that, we have multiple different applications that we can be running. But where we kind of differentiate with this Microsoft uh, Teams messaging platform is we really focus on the ability to communicate with people outside of our firewall. Um, so WebEx Teams, frankly, is what uh, me and the CDW team use to collaborate on when we're going to put this webinar together, what the content is going to look like, who's going to present what. Um, Tolu, who you're going to hear from in a moment, is someone I work with very frequently, and we chat back and forth, instant message back and forth, share documents back and forth, all through this WebEx Teams platform like we're working inside of the same organization. So. Um, you know, sometimes when I get asked, you know, what would the difference between the two be? And I suggest, you know, in the Microsoft world, it's not necessarily that easy to say, grab someone's email address and just start chatting with them on uh, Microsoft Teams. But it's very easy to do that in the WebEx world. And in fact, we do that all the time. All I need is your email address and I can start a chat with you. If you've never ever used this tool before, you'll get an email that says, hey, Kevin wants to collaborate with you. You click on that link, put in a password to protect yourself and you get bounced into a browser where the chat, the document, all the follow-up is uh, available there for you to see. Um, as you deploy more WebEx uh, tools or applications inside of your organization, this app becomes your one-stop shop for anything WebEx related. Um, but if you are just using WebEx meetings, there's an app just for WebEx meetings, or if you're using just WebEx calling, there would be an app for that as well. So WebEx Teams is you know, really the way I've gotten out of my inbox and I'm able to, again, communicate with people that don't work at Cisco like they work at Cisco. It's been a fantastic tool uh, for me over the past couple of years since we've rolled it out. And absolutely, it's been mission critical for me over the past month. Um, I'm gonna take a moment here to shine the spotlight on uh, the WebEx calling application or solution that we have as well. As I mentioned, uh, we acquired Broadsoft a little while ago, and uh, we took the Broadsoft uh, sticker off their cloud and replaced it <laughs> with the WebEx sticker. No, I'm joking. But um, we've again taken this you know, monster inside of the industry and added it to our Cisco portfolio. And now this is something that you guys can work with your CDW folks on rolling out for your organization as well. So this is you know, call control for voice in the cloud. Um, you buy the phone, you buy the license, you connect it up to the cloud, and you have your, your you know, what used to be your on-prem solution now uh, being delivered from the cloud. 
So again, you know, great for organizations that are trying to move away from that on-prem or uh, capital type of expense for voice and looking at voice as a bit more of a utility and looking to move it to that OPEX type of model, um, but certainly also a great way to start deploying uh, home office connectivity, if you will. Um, you know, there are reasons sometimes why uh, having everybody use their personal cell phone number is not always good for business. Uh, this is a great way to make sure that everybody uh, is picking up the phone when someone calls your business line and your customers are continuing to be served um, as best they can. Um, it should be noted as well that we have a contact center solution uh, that can be deployed in the cloud. That's something that we can actually spin up very quickly. Um, I'm hearing from a lot of our customers um, that were, in some cases, extremely reliant on their contact center for either both customer uh, communication or, in some cases, it was a great revenue stream for a lot of organizations. And to not have people to be able to go to that physical contact center uh, or customer care center is certainly putting a bump um, in their their way of working. So uh, whether it be just strictly voice dial tone so you can reach out and touch someone or looking to deploy a customer care center in the cloud, that is another product that we've added to our WebEx portfolio. And with this uh, calling solution that we have, of course, I can pick up a piece of plastic and dial a number the old fashioned way uh, to make that call, or I can integrate it um, with any of my other Cisco solutions. So if I want to make a phone call while I'm sitting here at my home office, I can click that user on my laptop and it will actually launch that call on my physical piece of hardware that I have sitting beside me. Or of course, I can simply make that call uh, through a soft client on my laptop or even on my mobile device. I can run uh, the soft client there and use my business line uh, or my business number to get that call on my mobile device. So thinking about those road warriors, but also trying to think about uh, the customers and how it's going to be easy to get in touch with the people that they need to get in touch with. Um, the last thing here from the WebEx portfolio before we do a couple demos and talk about some integrations that I'm going to talk about um, is uh, the WebEx hub. Um, so again, bulk of my time here at Cisco has been in this collaboration world, though I did take a short vacation and was a Cisco account manager here in the Toronto area. Um, and I was uh, pretty successful and had a lot of fun actually uh, talking to my customers about Meraki. And if you guys use Meraki, you know uh, why I had a lot of fun uh, showing that to my customers. Um, it's a great platform that we have for networking, and one of the things my customers loved about it was the Meraki dashboard where they had this pane of glass um, and they could get all this visibility, transparency, control, make changes to everything on their network regardless of where they are. So we've really kind of taken that same learning and we've injected it into our collaboration world and we give our customers a tool called the WebEx Control Hub. And this is where you can go um, to administer your licenses, make moves, add changes, see analytics, how many people are uh, making meetings or using our meeting solution, who's using voice over IP, who's using audio conferencing, all of these insights that customers need to help optimize the way their organization is working um, is all visible through this pane of glass. Um, so again, I think this is a, a really fantastic tool for users, especially smaller organizations that have IT staff that are either stretched thin um, or frankly, you know, don't really want to spend too much time on a collaboration learning curve. Uh, this hub that we have is extremely user intuitive, extremely easy to use. And rather than spend too much more time uh, talking about it, uh, we're going to pass the baton, baton over here to Tolu, who's going to do a, a short demo for you. Um, but just before I do that, you know, like I said, we have the ability here to dive into a real-time meeting and assess why there might be a poor meeting quality there, um, or a post meeting. We're allowed to do that. Um, again, we can look at. You know, who's had meetings inside my organization? How many did they have? How many meetings did they join? 
Um, if I was talking about the meeting room, we can actually use our video endpoints and some of the tools that we have to assess how often our meeting rooms are being used, how many people are joining those meetings. Um, so you can make sure you're optimizing your uh, real estate, which for most organizations is probably the most second expensive thing apart from headcount. Um, and again, from a manageability standpoint, which we'll see in a moment, it makes your life a whole a lot easier. So with that being said, I'm going to pass the uh, ball over here to my friend Tolu from CDW, because who better than CDW to show you guys how uh, they can turn this on for your organization. Here we go, Tolu. Sure. Thank you very much, um, Kevin. Um, I'm just going to show, um, again, just to introduce myself once again. My name is Tolu Osho. I'm Solutions Architect at CDW covering the collaborations practice. Um, one of the favorite things about um, Cisco is the simplicity of the experience, right? I've been deploying meeting rooms for the longest time now, since the days of Tanberg, um, where Kevin used to work, and things have um, really, really changed in terms of um, the joint experience. I've seen slides where people complain, it takes seven minutes to join a meeting. I keep wondering, was that a Cisco endpoint or was that something else? Um, one of the things you have that is consistent with um, Cisco is, again, like I said, the simplicity. You have the same experience across all device types, all platform. It's a green button um, with the four-letter word join. Um, but that is not what I'm going to be showing you now. Um, um, later in this webinar, I'm going to be showing you um, the different ways by which you can join meeting integrations with Office 365, and which is very, very neat. Um, today, I'm going to be showing you the WebEx control hub, and I'm going to share my screen real quick. So <clears throat> this is what the WebEx control hub looks like. This is the landing page when you sign into your WebEx control hub. This is a site that I spun up overnight so that I can do this demo for you guys. Now, in this, um, on this site, I have it integrated back with Office 365 so that I can have um, something like an hybrid calendar. And to um, Kevin's point, you can have something like at WebEx or at Meet, and it's going to automatically populate your personal room conference into the meeting invite. I'm going to be showing you how to add Jesus to WebEx. It's very simple. Um, there are two ways to go about it. It's either you have a directory connector, which kind of ties back to your on-premise um, um, exchange or Active Directory, or you leverage the steps to connect to your Azure Active Directory. I did not do this because, again, um, like I said, this is a quick demo I wanted to show you. But again, the process to do it is there. And if you look at this, it's not a long document. It is very, very short. And immediately you add new users on Azure, it's going to be populated on WebEx Controller. Um, currently, to add a new user, you go to your sign-in, you click on users um, on your left-hand um, pane, you click on manage users, and it's going to show you the different options through which um, you can uh, add users. Um, you can also assign licenses, which is something I've done here. If I modify my template, you will see what I've done in the background. What I've essentially said is, for any user that is going to be added to WebEx Controller, assign them WebEx Teams licenses, license, assign them a WebEx Teams meeting license, a WebEx Enterprise, um, a, a, a Enterprise Edition license, WebEx Collaboration Meeting Room license, and also integrate them with Hybrid Calendar Service so that subsequently, when I'm adding users to this um, website, I don't have to do this again. So I'm just, I'm going to quickly close this and come back to manage users. I'm going to manually add users. Because I love my son so much, I'm going to add him to this site so he can make WebEx calls with everyone in this daycare. So his name is Daniel, right? His email address will be at, um, I think it's Dan, cdwcanvoicelabs.com. Apart from adding users this way, you can also leverage the CSV right to do that so um, if you want to do bulk upload of up to 25 users you can leverage on a csv to do that i click on next it shows the status as new user and i confirm adding right 
Now, like I said, I have the template, right? Because I've enabled auto assign, I don't have to come back to click all the licenses that are available to me. This guy immediately has everything it needs from a licensing standpoint to start consuming WebEx meetings. As we can see, this was successful, zero updated users, zero errors, and this is finished. It's that simple, right? Now, the last step from this user standpoint is a sign in into their email. It would have gotten a welcome email from Cisco already, and it needs to sign in with the username and password. Once it clicks on it, it gets presented a WebEx sign on page. WebEx would add in, ask him to um, confirm a password. They put his password and it becomes active, right? So again, that's a short story on how to add users to the WebEx controller. Just before I return the thunder back to you, I just want to show you what analytics looks like from a WebEx standpoint, right? This basically is what a landing page for analytics looks like, right? It tells me how many meetings we've had, average uh, meetings per unique host, the total video minute, minutes, total meeting minutes, number of unique hosts, number of participant hosts. It's also going to show you what the average join time for this in terms of seconds. You see what the, uh, what the performance of that is. You see how people joined, right? Uh, we see that 98% of uh, people that joined, joined through audio VoIP and 1% joined through TSTN. So WebEx kind of shows you the analytics, um, um, the drill and analytics. On another tab is where you have troubleshooting. Troubleshooting takes what you see on the analytics page a lot further down. So I believe if I put an email address here, this one I did not practice it, so we can see anything. So again, it's going to show me uh, a meeting. If I click on that, it's going to show me all the details, right? This was a one person meeting. It's going to show if I joined with video, which is yes. Did I share anything? Uh, yes. And um, again, specific details around um, the experience. It shows that I was the host. I joined with a WebEx meeting client. I joined from a Windows 10 platform. I mean, I joined um, from a Chrome, um, uh, a Chrome, my Chrome web browser. And this was my local IP. This is my public IP. This is interestingly where I live. This is the media node that I connected to. And now did I disconnect I, the host on God, which means I ended the meeting by hanging off the meeting. So this is the kind of um, um, rock bottom um, analytics that um, WebEx um, would provide you. Um, so again, I'm going to pass the ball back to Kevin. You can reclaim and become the presenter again. Just a minute. You got to slide it back to me there, Tolu. Sure. So, yes. Yeah. So, if uh, we needed any more evidence, um, then the WebEx Hub is easy to use. Uh, the fact that Tolu just kind of went off script there to show you guys something that he hadn't planned and felt confident enough to do that, um, you know, I think is a great indicator that this is not necessarily. Uh, uh, you know, vaporware that we have here on the truck. Everything that we're using, everything that we're doing today is kind of mission critical. Um, it's day-to-day, -day, it's in production. Um, it's maybe just a little bit bleeding edge because both of us work for large IT organizations, um, but uh, it's not anything that, you know, is, is in beta version. Um, so, and again, you know, part of the thing that I like that totally showed us there in that analytics piece is it's really giving us a lot of details about, you know, not only how are these people joining this meeting, what endpoint are they joining from, you know, what type of audio conferencing are they using, 
right? So if you have your whole organization working from home right now, they should probably be saving you all some money by using the free voice over IP uh, tool that's included in WebEx as opposed to an audio conferencing service that you might be paying for. And it's through this type of uh, visibility or this data that we get that you can constantly be tweaking or optimizing the way your organization works. But I also really like that it showed, you know, what node did we connect through? What IP address? What was the browser that we were using? Um, because security, no matter how you want to look at it, is uh, very top of mind for most organizations. I mean, it's a billion dollar industry if you're sitting on the wrong side of the fence. So we always need to be one step ahead or thinking one step ahead of our, our uh, I guess we'll say our security enemies in this case. So, you know, not only has uh, security, privacy, encryption been built into collaboration as long as I've been around, but again, Cisco's become a fairly large security company over the past couple of years. It's in ingrained in everything that we do, um, and that includes our web meetings, right? So uh, we offer true end-to-end -end encryption for our meetings, but even more than that, the way we encrypt our data and where we leave our data is a little bit unique. And what we do is nobody inside of our organization or any other organization has the keys to decrypt that data except for the customers. Um, so you know, God forbid it would ever get happened, but even if your data did get seized, nobody can read it unless they have your keys. Um, again, you know, we think about these tools as tools that we deploy to an, allow companies or organizations to work as one organization under one roof, regardless of time zone, country, environment, or whatever it might be. And we're not gonna be sloppy about the way that we do this. We want these uh, organizations communicating outside of the firewall with one another, but we can't compromise um, any intellectual property or data or whatever it might be when we're doing that. So we think about how are we going to secure these uh, intercompany communications, um, and then everything that we do, we are doing adhering to industry standards or compliance or whatever it might be. So whether you be a government organization, education organization, a healthcare organization, these collaboration tools are safe, secure tools that you can be using for those assessments, right? HIPAA compliance would say, no, WebEx will not assess whether or not a patient uh, is sick or ill, but it can absolutely be a tool that is used to determine whether or not someone's having a stroke based on pupil dilation, right? Um, and again, like I alluded to at the beginning of the call or earlier in the call is, if you like the things that Tolu and I are talking about and showing you today on this call, um, but you've invested in, for example, one of the other two brands that I have on this slide, you know, maybe you've gone down the Google road or even like Cisco, for example, we're an Office 365 uh, customer as well. Um, so if you like what we're talking about and what we're showing you here today, and you wanna talk to your CDW rep or Tolu about it, uh, you're gonna be pleased that this is not gonna be a rip and replace, or you bought the wrong thing, or you shouldn't have got type of conversation. Um, what we are all about, again, is augmenting what you might already have to enable you to do what you need to do, right? My analogy that I sometimes share around this is, you know, I have a pretty nice Sony Bravia TV here in my living room, but around the holidays, I upgraded this TV that I have here in my room uh, with a Sonos, whoops, with a Sonos soundbar. Um, that isn't to say that the TV that I have, I shouldn't have bought or there was anything wrong with it, but when I've added on this additional component to the area where I go to enjoy entertainment, um, it has certainly enriched that experience. It's given me AI in my living room. I can listen to music in my living room through my TV now. <laughs> so when we talk about, hey, what do you have today and where do you want to go? We're not going to necessarily suggest you throw out what you have today. We're going to show you how we can make these two things work together. So with that, I'm going to pass the ball back here to the smart guy on the call, Tolu, and he's going to show you how uh, Cisco and Microsoft, for example, play extremely well together. Thank you very much, Kevin. Um, apparently, the last time I spoke, I'm not sure I turned on my video, did I? 
You unmute Kevin. Saying you, we know you just didn't want to intimidate anyone with your good looks there. <laughs> Don't so worry. Because, <laughs> I'll practically, I was, I was really smiling. I was <laughs> because I, I didn't know my camera was turned up. Okay. And to the point, um, like Kevin mentioned, Microsoft integrates very well with Cisco and Cisco integrates very well with Microsoft. Um, I'm even trying to wonder where to start from, right? But I'm just going to do something real quick before I share my screen. Let me pull a Word document to the side. I'm going to do three, um, three integration um, demos for you. Now, let me share my screen. Let me just wait for this to load. Now, this is me trying to collaborate on within um, Microsoft Teams, I mean, within Microsoft Word to WebEx Teams, right? Let's assume I'm working on this PowerPoint. I mean, I'm working on this Word document. I need an idea from one of my colleagues. My favorite colleague is Mohamed. I need to ask him something about what I'm working on. I'm not sharing this document with him. I'm just being able to collaborate with him in real time from this um, from this app, right? So I can scroll to the bottom. Let me just move this. Sorry, let me move this out. And I can type a message to Mohamed, right? Real time in my watch documents, right? I can do that immediately. But well, that is just one of those things that I can do from uh, inside Word. I can start a meeting with this document in WebEx, right? But because I'm in a WebEx meeting, I don't want to do that right now. But that is one of the capabilities that um, WebEx uh, would give you when you're fully integrated. One of the things I try to tell customers is the story around WebEx is not just to pay for a subscription and sit back and enjoy. It's just it's pay for subscription and ask the, your partner, like CDW, the right questions and how to get the full benefit of this, right? Once you turn on these integrations, um, you would find out that even with your end users, their workflow flow becomes a lot simpler and they would derive a lot of benefit from this. One of the critical things um, around um, platforms like WebEx is, um, is adoption, right? And Things like this is what would help you or what would encourage adoption and would also speed it up. So I'm going to minimize this one document. And this is Mohamed, right? This was the message I typed to Mohamed um, a couple of um, seconds ago. But we want to take our collaboration a little bit further, right? So I want to share a document with him. I have two options. Option one is to upload from my computer. Option two is to share from my OneDrive or SharePoint Online. The good thing about sharing from OneDrive or SharePoint Online is if you have an, um, what's it called? If you have a data loss prevention policy in place, it's going to follow you right into WebEx Teams. If this file is something I'm not supposed to be sharing based on our data loss prevention policies, WebEx Teams is going to block it immediately. The other good thing about WebEx Teams, which we might not find across the aisle, is the fact that you take this policy with you into your customer's organization. So take, for example, I'm chatting with um, Kevin, and I'm trying to share a document with him that I'm not supposed to share outside my organization. Your data loss prevention policy is going to block it immediately. Why? Because WebEx allows you to transfer those policies with yourself into, um, um, into WebEx Teams. Now, I'm just going to pick up a file from um, WebEx Teams, just um, any random file. Load. So I go to Documents, then I go to ABC Group Phone System, then I open this. So would you like the link to work for anyone in your organization? Yeah, people in my organization and all of that. And I can also allow editing. All of these are capabilities built into SharePoint. It's nothing wizardry that uh, WebEx Teams is doing. I click on Apply and it's going to come up immediately, right? Once I share this, I can open this file inside of WebEx Teams and I can co-author with Mohamed. Just a minute, let me. Oh, sorry, I forgot to send it.
okay? Mohamed is going to have this file. This file is in um, OneDrive. It's not even OneDrive. If I click on it, it's going to open another WebEx Teams um, uh, page. Which I'm going to pull to this point. It's still trying to load. If you look at the top right corner, I mean, top left corner, you would see the WebEx Teams icon, which means we are not leaving WebEx Teams. We're just trying to um, integrate with WebEx Teams. So if I click on Edit Workbook, right, um, I need to convert this. Again, all of these are features and capabilities that are built into, um, into uh, what's it called? Um, SharePoint. All of that being transferred into WebEx Teams. I can do this. I can make changes, right? While I'm making changes, it's going to show my name on this side, on the top right corner, that I'm making changes. And if Mohammed comes on to make changes too, it's going to let you know that Mohammed is making changes at a specific place that he's making the changes in. Like I said, all of this has nothing to do with WebEx Teams. WebEx Teams is just a vehicle for SharePoint to do its things. Um, this is one of the integrations I love the most um, with um, about um, WebEx Teams with Office 365. The one I'm about to show you, okay, I lied about the former one. This is the one I love the most, right? Now, in this is my uh, Microsoft Teams page, right? Um, I'm sure a lot of us are very familiar with the interface for Microsoft Teams. These are the teams I belong to in the office, right? Um, but again, it gives me an extra tab to click on WebEx, right? WebEx, and from this tab, I can schedule my WebEx meetings. I can join my WebEx meetings. I can see what my calendar looks like. So if I click on WebEx, this is me in WebEx, and this is my personal room. These are all the meetings that I have today, right? If I wanted to join the webinar from, um, Microsoft, Te from Microsoft Teams, I would have easily clicked on join. Um, I have a couple of sessions that I also booked, like a demo. I can also join them from this um, tab. But again, I can't join from um, I can't join from this because I'm in the WebEx meeting already. But again, it presents me all the join buttons. And again, you will see that I have some join because I was invited to them. I have some starts because I scheduled those meetings, right? So the experience become it's very, very seamless. If I take it a step further which is more like breaking the bank, I also have integration with WebEx calling, right? So that if we've chosen to adopt WebEx as our entire collaboration platform, and we want to retain WebEx, I mean, we want to retain Microsoft Teams for instant messaging and what, what have you, I can still definitely leverage um, Microsoft Teams to be able to make a call. Now, for you to have an interface like this appear for you in Microsoft Teams, you need to have paid for a phone system license. For you to make a call from this, you need to have a domestic um, calling plan, or you need to have done uh, an a direct routing integration. But WebEx gives you that interface right immediately. Now, because I don't use WebEx calling in my organization today at CDW, this is not useful for me, but again, this kind of shows you that this is possible. I'm going to spin up something, which is more like a demo that, like a demo lab I have in the back end. This would actually do my WebEx calling bid, right? If I make this call now, Let me disconnect this and try to call again because I want this to show up and I can show you this on my mobile phone. Kevin, sorry, I'm I'm not acting the script. <laughs> so this is what it looks like. I don't know if you can see it, but this is me getting this call from um webex teams on my webex calling app on my mobile phone so like i mentioned the integration is back to back the integration is fantastic the integration is phenomenal and again a couple of months time we're going to have all of this on the room endpoint so you're going to have be able to join your microsoft teams meeting from a webex device and vice versa 
So let me stop sharing and pass the ball to you. My son is going to introduce himself anytime soon. So be prepared for that. Kevin. Thank you very much, Tolu. That was fantastic. Um, and indeed, uh, love your confidence to go off script there. And that actually saved me a slide because I had had a slide in there, uh, again, illustrating that you can uh, make a WebEx or Cisco voice call from your Microsoft environment. Yeah. Uh, just to add to what, just to add to that, not only WebEx calling, you can also integrate Cisco Java with it. Yeah, so, you know, uh, when we get out there and we talk to customers, right, there are some customers that are maybe at an E3 type of licensing agreement uh, with Microsoft. And depending on what they have today or what their Cisco investment looks like, um, you know, not going to E5 and uh, addressing some of those advanced collaboration things like calling meetings, what have you, with the Cisco world uh, is certainly a lower cost way to go and remove some of the third party complexity that's involved. Um, and you know, I I'm I think I can be fairly bullish about the fact that we have a really fantastic meeting experience, um, and there's really no reason, as you saw, that you can't take our world class WebEx meeting experience and just embed that and have it live right inside your Microsoft Teams chat world, um, and that. If I was reading, say, maybe a Gartner or Wayne House report um, would be what I call playing to vendor strengths, right? They do productivity extremely well. We do collaboration extremely well. Why not use our amazing B2B or B2C collaboration capabilities to get that amazing Microsoft productivity, PowerPoint documents, proposals, whatever they may be in front of more people. Right, so again, with WebEx, we're trying to make sure that it's very simple to use and very simple to manage and provides us a, a great user experience so that it's something that's uh, desirable to use. Uh, we're thinking about security from the ground up and we're providing you tons of visibility and analytics and control. Data is your darling. Let's give you as much data as you can as possible. Uh, we have a uh, hardware that integrates into these solutions. So no matter what your work environment might look like, or even if you're working from a mobile device, we can integrate that experience uh, right there, right? If you're going to be serious about software, you better be serious about hardware. And we are exactly that. Um, I think we've done a pretty good job of showing that, you know, you don't have to pick one and stick with it. You can cherry pick. Uh, the best or vendor strengths and make those work inside your environment or like I've talked about, it's not going to be a rip and replace conversation if you've maybe made some Microsoft investments. And in fact, we have more integrations and investments. We just don't have that much time today. And again, uh, we're always thinking the next step down the chessboard or even two steps down the chessboard is what other things can customers start doing with these environments or what other software capabilities can we be pushing out to the platform? Form, um, to allow them to do more with less. And if we pull the lens back even further on what Cisco is all about, right? Like I talk about, Cisco does more than just collaboration, but we uh, build some secret sauce in that the more Cisco you lay on, layer on top of each other, um, the more uh, uh, benefit that we can unlock for you. Um, so again, whether you want to look at any connect for a secure VPN connection that I'm using right now, uh, whether or not you want to look at something like Duo to make sure that I've got, you know, two factor authentication and the wrong people aren't ro logging into my devices, or you want to look at something like Cisco umbrella to make sure that, man, this looks like a pretty smoking deal on some face masks, but you know, is this going to open up a hole and cause a security problem for my environment? So. You know, we are the organization that can kind of shore up everything that you're doing, making sure that however you're communicating with people is done safely and securely. And here, you know, would be an example of how we can round out your entire home office to make sure that you're working to the best of your ability, but you're also uh, not compromising anything. 
right? So this is what I have right now. I'm working on a MacBook right now. I've got a Cisco headset here that's all managed through a central you know, solution call manager or a pane of glass. This is making sure that you aren't hearing the noise going on over there and I can hear you even better. We've got a Meraki MX64 device sitting in uh, my home office here, creating this work network um, that I have, a wireless network or a place where I can go and plug in hardware and get that safe, secure tunnel back to my organization. Um, I can get some quality of service on this uh, communication and make sure that the applications that are most important are running and I can you know, tunnel my bandwidth a little bit. And then I'm wrapping uh, the entire thing with Cisco security software from the cloud and I'm you know, communicating with you all and Tolu and people both inside and outside of my organization with the WebEx uh, software pieces that I need to, to communicate that way. So uh, I want to, you all to be aware that um, CDW are enabled with a WebEx trial program. Um, they can help get you signed up for what would be a minimum of a 90-day WebEx trial. That 90-day piece was written pre-coronavirus, so I'm pretty sure that's a pretty rubbery time frame that we have at the moment. Um, but this would be a fully deployed WebEx solution for you all, uh, fully provisioned in the cloud. Uh, you would have access to that WebEx hub that Tolu showed you. Uh, you can turn on things like single sign-on, Active Directory, Calendar Connector, what have you. And you can even start measuring through that analytics piece, how is this being adopted? How are these people working from home? Are we having the amount of meetings or frankly, you know, are we having even more meetings because we're not spending 90 days in traffic or 90 minutes in traffic each day? Um, and then, like I talked about, uh, if you want to take any of our security solutions for a test drive as well um, to make sure that everything that they your users have wherever they're working is safe and secure, uh, CDW can can connect you with that. So. Again, just a couple, you know, main bullet points I want to leave you with here from a WebEx perspective that, you know, we might not have as many billboards scattered around the city as some of the competitors, but we are absolutely the number one platform. Nobody did 34 uh, billion or did the, you know, billions of minutes in the month of March like we did for meetings. Um, we build security in privacy, encryption, everything from the ground up. This is why we are the mission critical solution for educators, uh, commercial businesses, Right. There's a reason uh, Boris Johnson got his wrist slap for hosting his uh, cabinet meeting on a on a competitor's application. And there's also another reason that the G20 summit happened on our application. Um, right. We are uh, think about business first um, and we want to make sure that you are using our tools to reach out and communicate with the people outside of your organization or even inside of your organization safely and securely. So I know I blathered away there a little bit and we went off script with the demos. So we're right at the top of the hour. Um, we did have a question or two come in, which I've addressed in the chat. But if there's any other questions that we can address, I would be happy to do it. Awesome. It looks like there's one question here. Uh, will Teams integrate with an on-prem call manager? Uh, the customer is currently using Jabber as the calling client. And I'm going to say the short answer to that is yes. Um, again, we don't, you know, we're never going to have a rip and replace conversation. Uh, I think Tolu mentioned that in the in the presentation, and that's something he can definitely uh, address and expand with you guys. Awesome. Uh, we are at the top of the hour, so I do want to thank everybody for joining us today. If you do have a question come up, please reach out to your account manager. Uh, as a reminder, you can email marketing team at cdw.ca if you do not know who that is. We'd be happy to answer any questions. So thanks again for joining today, people. Thanks for your time, everybody. I have a grade one math class to teach. And uh, <laughs> 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 I hope everyone enjoys their time working from home. But I know CDW can make uh, that experience a whole lot easier for you. So appreciate your time, everyone. Thanks very much. Definitely. Bye, guys. Have a good one.